and this is just kind of like a little meme that's like um, this is our debt from the Seven Years War. We fought to protect you from the French. Um, now we need you to pay back your debt, so we have to take your taxes. And then Patrick screaming, revolution! And so it's just kind of making fun of the American colonists' reactions. This is how much debt they were in, and they needed to pay it back fast because they were broke. Uh, they more than doubled our size of land, as you can see. So this is... Sorry, I don't mean to yawn. This is how much more land we got, which is quite a bit more. And um, this week you're going to decide which side you're on. So there's an activity this week where you have to decide if you're a loyalist or a patriot. And loyalists um, were on the side of the king and the patriots were for the revolution. It doesn't really matter which side you were on. It's just I want you to understand those words and kind of where you would have lied back then. So on your notes, the first thing... The first reaction of the British, or the first tax that the British gave us was the Sugar Act. Um, and so basically, they increased the cost of molasses, which you guys are probably like, what the heck is molasses? Well, it was a baking utensil that was used quite a bit back then. Um, and, it, and it's easy to use. It was sugary. It was used in a lot of baking goods. And I, apparently, some people drink it. Um, it was very, very popular, so it's like increasing the tax on all your sugary foods that you guys eat today, and so people flipped out. Uh, they were very mad, so it was six pence per gallon, which you guys were really like, what is that? Just know it was an increase of money, and that's what matters, okay? Um, you know, they taxed. I'm going to take this word out. Tax six pence per gallon of molasses. So on your notes, write molasses. Erase this here too. It's good to review these notes because then I catch some of my mistakes. So I always put this in there because they actually propose a sugar tax in America, they call it. Yeah, I think it's called a sugar tax because there's a sin tax for alcohol and things like that. But this is why. I mean, we're severely overweight. They expect it just to get worse. They expect 70% of our children to be overweight and obese by 2025. That's only four year, five years away. Um, so that's a pretty big deal. So they so want to solve it by putting taxes on all your on all your soda pop and your cookies and all that stuff that's sugary and sweet in the store and just make you pay more for it. So that way, hopefully, you eat less of it. And there's been some studies that have done this. So the Stamp Act, this one is a, a tax that gets a lot of attention because the Sugar Act obviously wasn't popular, but the Stamp Act was really unpopular. So they started taxing everything, licenses, uh, newspapers, pamphlets, diplomas, decks of playing cards, like all this stuff, like just crazy stuff. So this is when people really started to get really upset and start protesting and going crazy because it was just an unreasonable tax. And so they even started making these protest stamps like you see below. So why would the British do this? As you guys know, they were broke from the French and Indian War. They needed money to pay off their debt, okay? So we're going to go down here to your notes, and we're going to fill this out. So I'm pretty sure I need to figure out how to do split screen on my computer. Yep, it's newspapers and playing cards that we need to write down. Decks of playing cards. And then why did they pass it? The British were broke from the French and Indian War. So this week, we're going to do half of these notes. And then next week, you'll turn in the other half. Plus, these notes are going to help you out with your poster activity. So this week, you actually won't turn this in into the grade book. Next week, you will. So. Is, but the thing is, is it's going to be hard to do your poster activity without doing these notes first. So um, 
anyway, we'll do half this week, half next week, and we won't have a mastery check until next week. Okay? All right, so now the other crazy tax that the British had was, oh, here's just an example of all these things that they were taxing, was the Quartering Act. And this is going to come up in our Bill of Rights again, because there's, there's one amendment where it says that we don't have to have, we don't have to house soldiers um, in our homes, and it comes from the Quartering Act. So it says, a law stating that the American colonists had to house and feed British soldiers. So if the soldiers came and knocked on your door and said they wanted to live in your house, you had to let them in and you had to house them. Naturally, you would have probably been a little upset, okay? Um, this is not uncommon in uh, Nazi Germany in World War II. The Nazis knocked on many people's doors and made them um, host them in their homes. So imagine, like in France, they took over France, then they knocked on people's doors in France and said, hey, we're moving in, you gotta house and feed me. I mean, I would be pretty PO'd. Not only did you take my country, now you're taking over my home and I have no privacy. So um, anyway, so this was the Quartering Act stating that the colonists had to house and feed the soldiers. So, so far we have three crazy taxes. We have sugar, the Sugar Act, the Stamp Act, and now the Quartering Act. Well, actually the Quartering Act isn't a crazy tax, it's just a crazy law, okay? And if that didn't make it all, and you can see the dates that this happened, this didn't all happen in one year, so it starts off in 1764, then the next year they have that, uh, they have the Stamp Act and the Quartering Act, and then the year after, if the king didn't seem crazy enough, he made this law, the Declaratory Act. So King George III declared um, that basically he has complete control of the colonies. So King George III controls everything. Um, he can do anything he wants in the colonies and they have to follow it. Um, so there, here's a just like a little picture. It says, I say I can pass any law on you and there's not a thing you can do about it. Um, so the king is now a tyrani an official tyrannical leader in the colonies and has complete and utter control. So we're going to write down. So notice here, it repeals the Stamp Act, repeals it, takes it away. Um, so I'm gonna make that red for you in your guys' notes. But on top of that, so it's like, okay, you don't win the stamp back. I'm going to give you this compromise. I'm going to take it away. But now, uh, king, uh, the king of England has complete control over the colonies and all of their laws. So I think I'd rather have the stamp act over that because that guy was crazy. All right, so then um, the next year we have the Townshend Act passed. So people are obviously pretty upset by the king's actions. And then on top of it, he's like, okay, I'm going to go and pass the Townshend Act. Oh, I forgot. I'm getting ahead of myself. So I, if we were in a normal class setting, this would be a discussion question. Should we only get news from the government or the president? And there's some kids that say yes to this, and I'm always shocked because I'm like, if we were just getting news from the president or the government, um, then we are just like North Korea because that's where they get their information from. And when it goes to just the government or to just one news source, then you get really inaccurate news. And our journalists today are getting, you know, criticized left and right for inaccurate news or fake news or whatever and there is a lot of inaccurate news and part of that comes with the 24-hour news cycle like they're reporting on news before the story is even done with and so that's a big problem but it's not as inaccurate as if only the government was um, presenting the news because the government's going to present news in its favor and they will lie and that's just what will happen in any government that has complete control. So, Townshend Acts, 1767, the British government was getting all of the money. Uh, they were not giving any representation to the colonists, and they were trying to pay off their debts. So there's a famous cry, no taxation without representation. 
Um, so they were taxing the tea, the paints, the glass, the ink, and the dyes. So they started taxing everything. And so the journalists fought back in the media, speaking of media, and saying it was unconstitutional to tax, uh, to tax all this stuff because, you know, it's taking away their freedom of speech and taking away their money. And, but the most famous part of the Townshend Act is the tax on tea. Um, so you guys have probably heard of the Boston Tea Party. So tax on tea, paints, glass, ink and dyes, but this tea is probably your most important part of it. So people flip out about this and then um, so that they repeal some of it. So in 1773, the Townshend Acts are repealed, but they keep that tea tax. And the British are like, no, I'm still not paying this tax on tea. And there was a time in America where most people drank tea. We didn't use, used to start our day off with coffee. Like right now I'm drinking coffee making this. Um, I do like tea, but I drink coffee primarily. I don't know if that's the American in me or what, but coffee is good. So anyway, um, so they, they repeal the Townshend Acts. This is important. They repeal the Townshend Acts, but they put a tax on the tea. And so the tea is going to lead to a lot of actions and excitement um, over here. So now you guys have your left side filled out. Um, obviously the British did more than this, but these are the most famous actions of the British that cause a lot of these reactions over here. And so now that you know how crazy some of their laws were, when we go over what our reactions are, you, you need to decide, were we justified? Did we commit treason? Were we wrong? Were we right? And some kids say some of them were right and some of them were wrong. Um, and then other kids say all of them were right, all of them were wrong, you know? It's just kind of where you, dep where you lie. Um, so you guys will be doing the Sons of Liberty interactive journey, and we're gonna be learning more about them next week. And uh, these, some people say they're a group of terrorists, some people say they're a group of patriots. Um, and you guys can see there's some famous Sons of Liberty like Sam Adams, uh, John Hancock, Patrick Henry. These are some of the names that you hear. Paul Revere, you guys have probably heard that name before. Um, but they do, they do terrorist actions. But I want you to notice this is Sam Adams right here. But the beer Sam Adams thinks the real Sam Adams is too ugly. So look, the real Sam Adams, but the beer, we don't know who that is. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's another, like, another son of liberty or whatever, but that is surely not Sam Adams because can you sell beer with that face? No. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. That was something I learned in Boston when we went there a couple years ago. So. Anyway, your interactive journey that you guys will do, um, just know that you will pick a, I'll go ahead and talk about it, um, but if you don't want to listen to me talk about it, you don't, you can stop the video, but, um, and I talk about this in the video too for the activity, but on this particular activity, you're going to choose um, which way you want to go, so after reading the beginning of it, you guys will decide if you want to help the Sons of Liberty or not. And if you decide that you want to help the Sons of Liberty, you're going to go on the Sons of Liberty journey. And then if you decide that you don't, um, you're going to go on the Loyalist journey. And um, you can fill out both boxes, but you only have to fill out one. So really on this activity, you're going to fill out these two questions, and then you're going to fill out A or B. So you really only end up writing three sentences. So it's a really simplistic activity. Um, but you can go beyond my expectation and fill out everything on it. So it's just up to you, okay? All right, um, you guys have a good day. Uh, remember, we are not going to turn this in until next week. You're just getting half of it done this week and then the other half next week. All right, bye-bye.